Hey, hi all. Good morning. So welcome to the SQL training course. Uh, before okay. So before we proceed further, so let me introduce myself. First of all, is my voice audible clearly to everyone? Yes. Okay, and the screen is visible. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the response. So, uh, coming to my introduction, I uh, myself, Tanvir Khan, I have over 11 years of experience in IT industry. And uh, during this tenure, uh, mostly I have worked on finance project for different MNCs and uh, product based companies as well. My total tenure has been uh, related to data related projects, either uh, as a business analyst, data analyst, development team, testing team. So I have played all these roles. So here uh, in this course, we'll be uh, discussing about uh, SQL uh, training. So yes, we start from scratch because we have participants who are freshers, who are from uh, non-technical backgrounds. So this course will start from scratch. There is no prerequisite needed. Even if you don't know anything about SQL, that is well and good. We start from scratch, like how to create table, how to insert data and all those things. Slowly we will go <clears throat> and we will cover till the advanced SQL like analytic functions and all those things. <clears throat> for your batch, for the first time, we have added this pivot recursive CT and then level by, okay connect or level by. So this we have added for the first time in your batch. Okay. Now coming to uh, the, the way how we proceed with the session is, this is the weekday class, uh, Monday to Friday, daily 7 to 8.30 a.m. IST. After each and every class, we will be sharing a recording with each one of you. You have to share your uh, Gmail ID that is registered on YouTube. We share recording on YouTube. They will give you private access. Okay. So once we will finalize the list of participants, we will uh, request them to share the Gmail ID. We will ask all the things. You don't have to voluntarily share. Okay. And then we will share uh, the recording after each and every class. So, and then after each and every class, we'll be sharing assignment as well and the classroom notes. So during the course, you don't have to note anything, just concentrate on the lectures, okay? Because we'll be sharing all these three documents on a daily basis to you. Uh, on Sunday, what will happen? We will not share assignment because the reason is we used to discuss the assignment of previous day class. So during those, uh, sometime we will not share the assignment, but generally after each and every class, we'll be sharing the classroom recording and uh, then the assignments and the classroom notes. Okay. Now this is totally a practical or the hands-on session. Fine. Uh, we don't have theoretical part, nothing. We'll be practicing on the Oracle platform. I will tell you how to log into this and how to install and all those things. Apart from this, we practice on Microsoft SQL Server as well. Okay. Coming to Oracle, this is very simple. Just you have to go uh, to the Google type Oracle Live SQL. You can see this address, right? Live SQL Oracle or write Oracle Live SQL. Okay. The moment you will click on enter, a new window will open and it will ask you to create an account. So just you have to create an account. That is a very simple step. Enter your uh, Gmail ID and create a, a new password. That's all. And then you have to log in through that and you'll get this page. Very simple. Yes, you have many other sites as well. Huh? Even if you're working on your official laptop, if your client laptop, so it will not uh, stop you. You can open this. This works everywhere. So many of you have raised concern that you don't have personal laptop, how you can practice. So you can practice on the official laptop as well. Okay. So apart from this, you have many other sites as well. You can practice there. Uh, but most of the online platform we have seen, they have uh, some limitations, okay? So this is the best one which we have found so far. So you can practice on this, okay? 
If you're interested on practicing on Microsoft SQL Server, so this is a platform. We will share the link how to install. This is open source. You can install this as well. Okay. Now, many of you have a confusion that then we're in my project, we are working on Postgres, we are working on MySQL, so on which platform you will be teaching. So see, SQL is a generic language, okay, developed by ANSI, they manage all these things. Uh, I agree that if you change from one platform to another platform, like Oracle, this is a one platform, or this is a Oracle vendor, Oracle SQL developer, then this one, Microsoft SQL Server, here the vendor is Microsoft, then you have Postgres, then you have MySQL, then you have Hive, okay. So if the platform will change, so hardly 1% of 0.5% difference will be there. So overall, the concept, the logic, the way how SQL behaves, how the SQL engine works, more or less it is one and the same. So I will request you guys that don't get confused with that that then we are switching on Oracle and we are working on Postgres. He's switching on SQL Server, we are working on Oracle. So please don't get confused with that, okay? And you are free, you can practice on any platform, whatever you want, okay? So this is all about the course and the total duration will be close to 1.6 weeks, okay? So this is all about the course, huh? And the scope, you know, this says uh, uh, most of the job profile in IT industry, most of the job profile. So SQL is required. SQL is like a bread and butter. Okay, you work for any role as a business analyst, data analyst, data scientist, data engineer, or uh, business intelligence, or even for the full stack developer, they're asking that SQL, you should know. So SQL is like a bread and butter. It have uh, a lot of a scope. I think you all know, the scan the LinkedIn, you'll see most of the job profile they're asking. Uh, the SQL expertise, okay? Uh, before I proceed further, do you have any question, anyone? Any question? Hello. Yeah, hello, yeah, tell me. Yeah, yeah, hi, Tanvir Ashish, hi. this hi. side. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, Tanvir, I have a MS SQL like installed in my laptop, but every time when I try to like do some practice there, it is asking me some kind of host name or local host name mm -hmm. and the server name and this that but uh, that's i'm unable to like do their uh, practice and all so could you please okay. try, like help yeah, me yeah. With it? i will let you know okay i will let you know okay. uh, maybe i will suggest when you have installed that uh like it's been more than one month okay okay fine i will let you know okay you can do that Okay, I think you are talking about this. So suppose if I'm trying to run this. It will ask me yeah, something like yeah, this, right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so just you pass here dot. I have created it with a dot, okay? And just try this. Otherwise, we will connect, okay? Okay. I have provided a dot. I don't want to give any server name. Just click on connect. Now, see, it is connected. Okay? Okay, I'll try Fine. and let you know. Uh -huh, sure. Any other question? And guys, I want the session to be interactive. Okay, you are supposed to ask question and don't wait that when the session is over, we will ask question. Uh, keep on asking questions. Uh, I really appreciate the, the class, the batch, which is very interactive. Okay. Yeah, yeah I have a question, Tanvir. Yeah, please. Uh, so can we use uh, like uh, Oracle SQL developer? Yeah, that is what I have shown you here. This is the platform. Okay. This is Oracle SQL developer okay. platform okay, from Oracle Vendor. Okay, this is open source. I think you are you are asking the one which you have in your official laptop. Yes, yes, I have downloaded it. Yeah. SQL. Uh -huh, you can practice there as well. What I will suggest you, you create, you get that insert access from your uh, uh, project DB or someone. Okay, if they will give you. So once you have insert access, you can create table of your own. But if you, even if you don't have for practice purpose, you can you can use that. There's no problem. Okay. Perfect. Any other question? Anyone? Uh, can I ask something? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. The forum is open uh, for you so, guys only. Yeah. So uh, after, uh, so what is the end result? Like, uh, is it preparing us for some certification in SQL? Uh, certification, sorry, we don't provide certification. We are working on that. 
So maybe before your course will be over and if we get that uh, certification and all those things, we will share with you guys, okay? And again, I want to highlight, you see, uh, certification is not having that much weightage, okay? Mm -hmm. Nowadays in interviews, the main thing is how you are answering the question. Okay, that, okay. that, that holds importance. Okay, so and this is generic I'm telling for any language, for any training. Uh, don't think that if you have certification that will add weightage and all those things. Yes, if you have external certification, maybe from Microsoft, Oracle, or Azure and all those things, of course, they hold some weightage. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, fine. Any other question, guys? And these are the topics we'll be covering during our course. Okay. Uh, any other question, anyone? No. Okay, then quickly, uh, I need some volunteer. Uh, if you can tell me what are your expectations from this course, why you have joined this course. I need five to six answers. Any volunteer please who wants to go first. Why you have attended, why you're planning to attend this course. Uh, hi, Tanish. Very good morning. Yeah, hi. hi, good morning. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, uh, I think yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, I started preparing for big data, so I want to switch my career in big data further. So that's why my core aim is to like, uh, make my skill set uh, so so good in SQL that uh, I will not face any issue in big data career in my further career. And the one thing more I wanted to ask actually. He, will I be able to crack all the hacker rank questions from basic to advanced level after this course? Okay, good. I will answer all those things. Any other okay. point? Any other expectation do you have? Hi, Tanvir. Hmm. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, one of the expectations from this course, as you said, uh, for understanding or uh, doing well in full stack development. So that is one of the expectations in this course. And also it, it is used in the cloud uh, engineering, right? The data has to be stored yes. in the database. Yes. Good. Uh, any other? Yeah, so we will like, uh, yeah. as you said, yeah, yeah. we have the freedom to ask the question. So that is a main thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, doing self-study and, you know, attending the life class, that's a main difference. So at least in life class, we, you know, the, the doubts can be cleared and if you have anything to ask that that will be taken care, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So I repeat and I know that uh, uh, most of the participants in my batch, close to 50, even the last June batch, which was over yesterday, 50, uh, 40, 50 percent of students are from referral. Okay. And uh, maybe you can get the feedback. I always motivate my students to keep on asking questions. Here we will not tell you that please wait till um, for the end of the class, then ask question, no. If you're getting stuck at any point of time, stop me then and there, show me the red signal. I will stop there, I will answer your question. Because I know this is a benefit of live session. Otherwise you would have taken Udemy course and many other courses are there to be frank, right? Many of the courses are there on YouTube. Why you came to my course? Because you want this to be in practice. So you have all the freedom. I repeat, you have all the freedom to ask any question, even if it is silly or whatever is there, keep on asking question. The batch, which is more interactive, I deliver more content. Okay, because many times if I'm delivering like a robot, many points I will forget. Okay, to be frank and honest, I'm telling you, Okay, if you will ask question, maybe some new topic will come to my mind, new concept will come to my mind, I will deliver that. Okay, so that is why we motivate the students to keep on asking question. If you're not asking, you will be at the, in a loss at the end of the day. Okay, second thing, you are working on it, you, you, are, you are stuck in a question, you can ask us after class as well. You can drop me a note on WhatsApp. Uh, maybe if I'm occupied, I will not be able to answer immediately, but we provide offline support as well. Okay, you can connect with us. We will help you out. Uh, any other point, guys? Those not speaking, please go on mute. Any other point? Hi, Tanvir. Yeah, hi. Still. Hello. 
uh, yeah. Uh, it, uh, yeah, I wanted to ask that is SQL uh, can be used for uh, automation in cloud or any other technology? Can it be a part yes. of Yes, 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 of course. Cloud. That's why I told in the very beginning that you see in ETL class, I mentioned this thing. Let me answer this again, this batch as well. See, SQL is required for all this job profile. That is why I told SQL is like a bread and butter. You go for any of this job profile in the JD, you will see they will be asking for SQL expertise. Either it is cloud as well. Okay. SQL is needed. Or you are planning for DBA, SQL is needed. You're planning for admin, SQL is needed. Okay. But especially those who are planning for data engineering role, data analyst role, data scientist role, Power BI, business intelligence, till here at least. You cannot move by an inch if you don't know SQL. Okay. So that is why try to learn it each and every piece, nut and bolt, screw of the SQL here. Okay. And we teach from SQL engine perspective that how the engine works. We'll not give you the definition only. Okay. And then you'll be having a lot of questions, close to 200 questions we'll be discussing during the class. Let me show you a few questions, the sample. You see, here a lot of questions are there. We'll be discussing during the class. Okay. Any other question, anyone? I think it is more than 200, 250 questions. Okay. So all these questions are part of your assignments. Any other question, guys? Anyone? Uh, hi, Tanvir. Uh, so yeah, hi. will you be covering uh, the performance tuning or the optimization of the queries? Uh, yeah, yeah, performance tuning will be there, of course. Why I have not mentioned performance tuning separately is because performance tuning we cover for each and every keyword. Okay, most of the keyword which have the performance impact, we will, we will keep on uh, explaining that. Suppose if I'm teaching you distinct or select, then okay, not, not select, but for distinct, then I will tell you that what is the performance impact, okay? If I'm telling you difference between delete, drop, and truncate, what is the performance impact? Okay, so that's a continuous, uh, process the performance it is not a separate topic okay oh, okay. it will be there yeah be there. yeah yeah that's my objective to join this course right oh, so performance will be like there to understand should... yeah to understand the concept uh, in depth so even oh. i'm working as an uh, even i worked as a sql developer but uh, so i'm okay. facing some problem in this performance even solving mm. that lead code questions right so mm. i think to improve that i have joined this thing. okay okay sure uh, someone has message and asking for John has message. Okay, how long is the course taking to complete? So John, it will take close to 1.5 months. That is six weeks. Okay. And uh, timing is 7 to 8.30 a.m. IST. I know maybe it is odd for you. It is 9.30 for you, John. 1.5 weeks, which is equivalent. Sorry. 1.5 months. To six weeks, seven to eight thirty a.m. IST. Uh, John, can you hear me? Okay, I'm not sure. Yeah, John, yes, I can hear you. Yes, yeah, I so, can hear you. Yeah. So this is the timing okay. and duration. Okay. That would be my. That would be my six thirty. 6.30 p.m. PST. 6.30 island time you are telling, no? Say that again. Uh, that is the, uh, you, you, are, you are in Ireland, right? Right? No, no, in uh, US. US is 6.30. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah, that's okay. 6.30 p.m. Okay, fine, fine, fine. No issues. Any other question, anyone? Uh, any other expectation why you attended this course so that I should see that it, whether my course is meeting that expectation or not? Any uh, other my, one of the questions I was trying to ask is, uh, hmm. do you think one can do this uh, like a fresh person with no knowledge of IT can do this? Yeah, yeah. It is what I mentioned in the beginning that I have designed this course from scratch. Okay. No prerequisite needed. I know many of my students, many of the participants are from non-technical background. Many are the freshers. So that is why we will start from scratch. Even if you don't know anything about SQL, you don't know anything about IT industry, that is fine. We are not bothered about that. 
just you want that you should be continuous in the class you should work regularly on the assignment that is more than enough no prerequisite that is needed okay all right thanks okay no problem uh shall i start or do you have any other question guys hi tanvi good morning yeah hi good morning so last uh, i want to ask that i am working now on a postgres db mm -hmm. and there we have a view section in the database where mm -hmm. we write the uh, uh, queries according to our requirement mm -hmm. so there the performance tuning is much needed because in the oh. view use sub queries and ctt and other windows function mm -hmm. so the main thing i wanted to know about the advanced analytical sql that we are going to learn in this course mm -hmm. okay now fine uh, i will answer this any other question anyone no okay let me check this uh, questions why i why i uh, mention all this expectation because you should be clear that uh, your objectives your intentions are getting met from this course or not okay coming to the first one big data data engineer you are planning for that this will be helpful or not so i have mentioned here this course is helpful for all this job profile because many of my uh, participants they have cracked the interview related to big data data engineering and all those things and i keep on posting on my practice group we have three sql practice group one sql practice group is for all my students of the old batch okay there i mentioned that who, uh, what uh, job profile they have cracked um, which interview they have tagged and all those things we discuss sql related questions as well there then we have two separate practice group for the external participant if anyone is getting a struck anywhere you post the question there we will answer it and the participants as well they answer it okay i, I hope many of you are the part of that group so you know that i will share that in that uh, uh, general group as well if interested you can join it okay so this course is is more than enough for big data data engineering only if you are planning okay coming to hacker rank and lead code very interesting question what i will suggest you guys is first of all whatever i am teaching concentrate on my lectures what all assignment i am giving you see this is like i will show you for june batch okay for june batch we have given all this assignment on a daily basis i will pick some random assignment i will show you how we used to give okay this is sample assignment i'm showing you the 22nd july we have cleared this assignment question so overall you will be having 8 to 10 assignment questions on a daily basis okay i think here you have something like that 10 or 11 something like that so what we suggest is first of all concentrate on my lecture okay during class don't write anything don't make any note we will share the recording if you're interested in preparing notes we prepare notes after that then we share the classroom notes as well i will show you the notes uh this is a hands on batch you know, see okay so here you can see what all we have practiced in the class we'll be sharing that code as well with you okay so first of all concentrate on my lecture religiously work on the assignment don't please don't jump to hacker rank as of now those who are freshers or new to this first of all work on my assignment question because we have designed in such a way that first of all it will give you a solid foundation okay once that is done once you are mature enough then we suggest you that now you can practice questions from hacker rank lead code or different different sql uh, practice group what i have on linkedin as well you are saying many people they will post question you practice that as well okay but make it a habit that on a daily basis you should practice four to five questions of sql because without practicing if, if you have the theoretical knowledge that is not enough or i will tell that is nothing if you are not practicing so make it a habit that at least you should practice five questions on a daily basis and of and of course then you will be able to solve this hacker rank or lead code questions whatever you have okay coming to full stack development yes this course will help you a lot uh, you can crack the interview for full stack development as well cloud this is needed if you are working on postgres views and all those things what you mentioned this i have covered in the beginning itself that during my course i will be practicing on oracle platform 
and Microsoft SQL Server. But yes, if you're if you're practicing on a Postgres, suppose your project is on Postgres or uh, Hive SQL, it is fine. You can practice there as well. Not an issue. Okay, performance tuning. I have answered this as well earlier that this performance tuning is a is something like which we'll be covering for each and every keyword. That how this particular suppose if I am teaching you CTE, I will tell you how this CT is CTE is better than your sub query. Where to your CTE? If I'm teaching a correlated query, okay, I will tell you that why we should not use correlated query, why this is not good from performance perspective, which one you should use for performance perspective. Because nowadays performance is a big concern. Why? Because you are handling millions of data. Okay. So that is why your query must be have must be good enough to handle those data in a less span of time. So we'll be discussing performance aspects as well. Okay. Uh, shall we start or do uh, if I'm correct, you'll be going to give this practice question like five years. Yes, 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 Ashish. I have mentioned this right now. We'll be giving you practice questions, five, 10 questions, or sometimes 15 questions on a daily basis. This is what I've shown you from my June batch example. Then this is from the July batch and all those things. Okay. Any other question, guys? Anyone? Sayyid Mukim, you want to ask something? Raise, raise hand. Hi, Tanvir. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, it is also used for the snowflake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Snowflake is again your database, right? So you can use it there as well. That is what I mentioned in the beginning. SQL okay. is a general language. Okay, whether you're yes, Snowflake, yes, yes. your Oracle, your Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres, Hive SQL, Snowflake, they all use that ANSI standard SQL. It's generic. Ah, huh. these all are different different vendors. Like suppose if you know how to drive a car, you can drive a Tata car, you can drive a Honda car, Hyundai car, right? So that is what, if you know it, you can practice that on any platform. Okay, and then it is a tailor data. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fine. Any yeah. other question, anyone? No? Okay. I will start uh, then. Uh, yeah. Just one question. Uh, yeah. The classes will be from Monday to Friday, right? Monday to Friday. What? Morning 7 to 8 30 a.m. IST. Duration will be 1. Point, duration will be 1.5 months, which is like, uh, close to six weeks. Okay. Uh, any other question? Uh, any other Tanvir, question? is there is there any uh, ETL here? ETL no, 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 no. We will not be teaching any ETL operation here. That is a different uh, course. We cover that ATL operation in this course. That is a different course. Okay, that's a different course. This is the one that we cover ATL. That is a different course. We don't cover ATL aspects here. Okay. 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 Yeah. Fine. Then any other question, guys? Anyone? Okay. Fine. Before we start with this is SQL. So this SQL stands for. Uh, any idea what is the full form of SQL or SQL? Structured query language. Structured query language. Okay. Full form of SQL is a structured query language. Why we tell a structured? We will discuss all these things. I don't want to initiate that discussion now. That's a big topic. Why it is a structured? What is semi-structured? Why it is unstructured? Why SQL doesn't work for unstructured data? What is no SQL? Why we have MongoDB and all those things? A different topic of discussion we'll discuss down the line because that is a little bit advanced concept. Okay, but SQL it stands for structured query language. Okay. Now, why? What is the need for SQL? You know, I told you that in all this job profile, you should you should have the SQL skill sets. But any idea why this all job, job profile need SQL? What is the benefit of SQL? Anyone, any thought, guys? To work on database. To Come work on. on database. Good, good. To work on database. Then how you will be benefited if you're working on database? Or it will benefit your organization? The main is the data extraction part. Suppose we create a data in a okay. known column but we need to find the useful insight from it. Okay. okay. Any other thought, guys? Why we need SQL language? To manage the data instructor. 
manage the data okay good any other thought in any database it is a understanding language so that's why it is a, it is also using a skill okay good okay fine that means uh, this is the language through which you can communicate with the database i think that is what you are telling right uh yes yes okay okay any other thought why sql uh, to get some desired output according to the business needs by Good. using some logic desired better than desired i cannot expect it expected output, uh, output. or numbers as per the client needs as per the Nice. Business. business needs. Okay, good. All these points are uh, are almost correct. Okay. First question is why we need SQL? Why the companies and all this job profile they want SQL understanding? What is the reason? Okay. You know, earlier days before 1980s and 1970s, what happened? People they used to manage all this data in files, papers, and all those things. Still, if you go to some government office. Uh, you will see that you'll be having files of uh, files and all those things will be there, right? So it is very difficult to manage the data from those files, correct? If they have to search for a data or any other information, they will they have to search through all those files and they will uh, check each and every paper, right? So that is very tedious task. Then we got this concept of database, okay? What is database? Database is like you can store your business related data in the database so that the purpose, the why, why we want to store in the database is majorly there are two reasons. The first one is you can manage it easily. Okay, you can manage it easily. Second one is if you want a, a particular data, a particular record, you can fetch it from there very easily. I will tell you that how uh, I'm telling that you can extract the data easily, how it will and quickly and all those stuff. Okay. But overall, this is the benefit of SQL language. Through this language, you can interact with the database. What is the database? Database is nothing but it is like a container where you can store the data of your business. Okay. So that you can manage it easily. You can uh, fetch the data. Uh, whenever you want, okay? So I will give you one example here. So suppose take the very simple example of an employee table, okay? And here, suppose you have ID, you have a name, you have salary, you have location, okay? Suppose I'm managing my employee database, okay? And this is the ID to three, five, Suppose the name is A, B, C, D, and some random salaries I am giving. Location, Delhi, Chennai, Mumbai, uh, Calcutta, Bangalore, okay. So you see, this is known as table, okay? This is known as table. And this is the name of the table employee. So this is my employee table, okay? So in this employee table, I have created these columns, this ID, name, have you started the recording? Okay, yeah. So here I have created ID, name, salary, location. So these are known as columns, okay? These are the columns of this employee table fine so now the question is that then we're in a table how many columns maximum we can keep here how many columns i have in this employee table four columns right id name salary and location we have only four columns here but the question is then is there any restriction on the number of columns in a in a table any thought guys, anyone? Is there any restriction that you can keep only 10 columns in a table? You can keep only 50 columns in a table. Any restriction? Any idea, anyone? 
Don't worry that your answer is correct or not. Just think and tell me. Uh, based on the requirement, uh, we can keep the columns, whatever we need. Huh. So there is no restriction okay, right. Right. on the number of columns. You can create a table with one column as well. You can create a table with two columns as well. You can create a table with 50 columns as well. So there is no restriction on the number of columns in a table. Uh, how to create the table, how to insert data, we will look into this, all, all these things, okay? So here, this is an employee table, okay? And I have this ID name, salary and location as a column. Suppose tomorrow I want to add one more column department. You can add it, okay? The database gives you this flexibility. You can add this as well. That's not a problem, okay? Let me mark it as HR department. This is sales department. This is tech department. This is again tech department and he's from HR department. Okay. So in a table, you can have any number of columns. This vertical cells, these are known as columns. Name is another column. Salary is the third column. Location is the fourth column. Department is the fifth column. Okay. Now this horizontal one, these are known as rows rows or records okay this is one record this is another record this is third record this is fourth record okay and this is your five record fifth record okay now again the same question is there any restriction on the number of rows in a table any idea no no restrictions no. No. there is no restriction on the number of records in a table you can create your table with five records. You can create your table with 100 records. Or you can create your table with million records. There is no restriction on that. Okay, fine. So far, any question? Is this basic thing clear? Table, column, record. Okay. Now, the question is, what is a table? Why we create table? Any idea? Why I have created table here? To store some kind of data. Oh, that's all. To store some kind of data. So you see in this employee table, I have stored this data. So in your database, you have to create a table where you can store some data. Okay. Now suppose the same data, if it is present in a file or the page or something like that. Okay. And, and suppose with the time, if it is growing, it will become difficult for you to manage, right? Suppose tomorrow, a new employee joined my organization. And suppose his ID is six, name is F. And salary is suppose 800. Location is Kerala. Department is suppose operations, okay? So you see, just I will add one record here and easily I can manage it. So that is the benefit of a database, okay? You can manage your data and you can extract. What I mean by extraction, I will answer all those things on the line, okay? So, but table is something like a container where you can store the data, okay? Now, in a database, how many tables you can have? Is there any restriction on the number of tables? We can have a multiple tables. Yeah. You can have multiple tables, okay? In a particular database, there is no restriction on that. Suppose here I will create one more table, department table, okay? And here the name is department ID, department name, okay? ID one, two, three, four. Suppose this is HR, this is tech, this is sales, this is operations, okay? So now I've created one more table, department table. Okay, so there is no restriction on the number of tables in a database. Huh. You can ask question that uh, why you have created a separate table department here. You can add department ID in the same table. That's a different topic of discussion about normalization. Okay, but the answer is yes. You can create n number of tables in a database. There is no restriction on that. I think those were working in project 
you might be working with 50 tables, 100 tables, 200 tables and all those things, right? So you can correlate this. So yes, there is no restriction on the number of tables in a database. You can have n number of tables, okay? Any other question, guys, anyone? No questions, okay. Now, then you can ask uh, one question here that, okay, then we, we got it that SQL will help me to manage the data and extract the data, that is fine. But the same thing I can do using Excel, no? This is the Excel sheet. So same task what you are showing on Excel, this is fine. I can manage on my Excel sheet. Why should I learn SQL, right? I can manage it here. You have, you, you have shown here that if you want to get a department table, I can get a department table. Tomorrow, suppose if I want to create a sales table, I can create a sales table on this Excel sheet and I can manage it here. Okay, fine, I agree, you can manage it. Can you tell me the limitation of data in an Excel sheet you can keep? Yeah, there is a limitation in column. There is a limitation, right? Good. There is certain limitation on the Excel sheet. But in database, you have you, you can handle 20 million, 30 million records. I, I think most of you, those who are working as a data engineering role, you know, right? So that you cannot handle it here. So that is one of the very simple and straightforward benefit of a database. You can store millions of data, millions of records. One thing. Then second thing is, suppose here in my this employee database, very simple five, six data I have taken. Suppose here, if I will tell you that I want to see the details of only those employees who are from Chennai location. Okay, I want to see the details of only those employees who are from Chennai location. So what we will do, we will apply filter on this uh, Excel sheet, right? We used to do like this, no? And then we'll apply filter here, Chennai. So I got the Chennai details, right? Same thing you can do using SQL as well. Okay, then again, you can ask question, that then we then why SQL? The SQL, uh, Excel sheet has given me this freedom to apply filters, I can do this task. Then why SQL? I agree for the simple filter and all those things you can do on Excel sheet. But suppose if I'm asking you that, show me the details of those employee whose salary is greater than the average salary of all the employee. Okay, now this is little bit complex logic, right? So here it will become difficult for you to apply on this Excel. Huh? Although you can apply, I'm not telling it is not possible. You can apply here as well. But the same thing if you have to apply using SQL, it will be very simple, very easy. But this is just an example I have shown you, I've told you, okay. Similarly, you have many other uh, data which you want, or which your business wants in order to understand how their business is performing, okay. Suppose if they want that, okay, show me the regions, the locations, where my uh, profit has increased quarter over quarter by 10 percentage, okay? So to solve all these questions, to get the data as per the business requirement, so through SQL, it will be very easy. We will see all these things on the line. Those who are not speaking, please go on mute. Okay, I think someone is asking a question. I think someone was asking questions. Sorry, I have muted. No. Okay, so this is the benefit of SQL. That is why SQL language is needed. So overall, the SQL language will help you to manage data, to store your business data, and to extract the data as per your business need. And that is why in all the job profiles, what I have shown you here, these all job profiles, these all job profiles work on top of data. Okay, that is why in all this job profile, SQL is very much required. I said I just joined the meet. Okay, that's good. Don't message if you have anything. You please ask the question. Okay. Uh, fine then. Now the next thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I have one question. Like yeah. in RD BMS, we have a relational database management system. Uh -huh. so my question is, what is the relation between the tables? Like when we say that we have a relational database. So mm -hmm. in relational database, we have a relational tables. So how we can define the relation between these tables? What is the relation uh -huh. word refer here? Uh -huh. right. Good question. So, okay. So this is known as RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. Okay. Now the question is why it is known as relational. The reason is, uh, those who are not speaking, please go on mute. 
the reason is before that i have to explain you what is structured and structured and all this data okay but let me first of all keep uh, uh, constraint to rdbms only then i will jump to that is structured and structured and all these things okay tell me one thing in this table okay i have inserted this data tell me one thing this first record id1 name a salary 200 location delhi department hr these all columns of this first record do they have any relation among them yes yes okay yes they have relation if i will tell you if i will show you this first record automatically you will understand that oh id1 means the name of employees a is earning salary 200 location is that it department is a chart okay mm. so all your traditional databases like oracle sql developer microsoft sql server netiza teradata okay they all work on uh, relational database system the relational means the data what you are storing they should have some relation okay they should make some sense and that is why they are known as a structured data and that is why the, the name of this uh, SQL is a structured query language, but nowadays you are getting data in audio, video file, and your uh, JSON file, your email link, your URL, and all those things. So you cannot save those data in a table format because they are the data. They don't have any relation among them. For that purpose, we use, we need that key value pair. Those who have worked on NoSQL, maybe they can correlate. We use key value pair and all those things. So for that, we use no SQL language, not only SQL. Okay. So that yeah, is why this is known as, yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to uh, tell about those things, what you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And there we use a database like MongoDB. Mm -hmm. Yes. Huh, you are correct. That is what I told you. To handle unstructured or semi-structured data, you have MongoDB, right? and they work on that key value pair, okay? So why this is known as a relational database management system? Because here the data, what you're storing in table format, they have relation, okay? Those data, which you are storing in MongoDB and all those things, the unstructured data, you cannot store in the table format, okay? You cannot store it. So that is why those are known as unstructured data. And this is known as a structured data and this traditional database system, they can handle it. I have I answered your question. Yes, Tanvir. Okay. So this uh, RDBMS system, your Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, they can handle only a structured data. Now, what is a structured data? A structured data are those data which have some meaning. Okay. You can, or you in a very straightforward answer, you can save them in a table format like this one. I can save this in a table format because they have some relation, right? The first record, they have some relation. Second record, they have some relation. If I will ask you, what is the department of employee name B? You can tell that, yes, it is cells. Okay. That is what is known as the relational database management system. Any other question, anyone? Yeah, hi, sir. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Like I joined a five minute ago so i don't know like uh, can you just elaborate the recap like what's the difference in sql like mysql tsql and lots of like oracle or something so i don't know key uh, mm -hmm. where to start and all and what you're teaching like it's about the sql part or a mysql or a tsql okay so already i have covered this but quickly i will give you a recap um uh, in this course we'll be teaching sql okay and whether you work on Oracle SQL Developer, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, or any other platform, Netiza, Teradata, Hive SQL, Postgres, all these are different, different vendors. That is the only difference, okay? The SQL language, the protocol, the rules, regulations of this, what I'll be teaching you, that is common on all this platform. Uh, there are little bit differences, 0.5% differences there. Okay, so I'll be teaching on Oracle platform. This is the one. Then I'll be teaching on Microsoft SQL Server as well. But you are free to practice on any platform. You can practice on MySQL. You can practice on Postgres. 
wherever you want because the syntax is almost same on all the platforms. Uh, we will be not covering PL SQL part here. That we will not be covering. That's a different course. Okay, have I answered your question? Yes, sir. What will be the duration? Duration is 1.5 months, six weeks. Timing is oh. Monday to Friday, 7 to 8.30 a.m. IST. Okay. Okay. Sir. Any other question? Okay. Uh, fine. So this is the table and this is the data we have shown you. Now the next question is, that is fine. You have shown this on an Excel sheet. How to create this in a database? Okay. Now see, database is a very big term. Okay. I'm not uh, explaining each and everything of that in this course because that is a part of ETL course. Here my main concentration will be on SQL part. Okay. So now how to create table? To create table, you have to write create table employee. I will stop here. This create is known as a reserved keyword. In SQL language, you have two kinds of keyword. The first one is reserved keywords. Okay. And the second is your user defined keywords. Okay. Reserved keywords are those keywords which have a special meaning and SQL engine can understand it. Okay. Like here, create. Create is a reserved keyword because the moment you will write create, your SQL engine will understand that the user wants to create something. Is that clear? Okay, then I have written table. So table is again a reserved keyword. The moment you will write create table. Now with this, the SQL engine will understand that the user wants to create a table. Then SQL engine will ask you that what, what's the name of table which you want to create? Then I have written employee. Now this name, who has kept this name? SQL has kept or Myself has has kept. Who has kept this name? The user defined. User has kept this name, right? So that is why here employee is the user defined keywords. Here employee is the user defined keyword, and you create or this table what I've written here. This is known as reserved keyword because SQL engine have a special meaning for this. They will understand. The very simple uh, analogy to this is suppose you you went to a restaurant, okay, and uh, you found that on a particular table it is mentioned as a reserve, okay. So can you go and occupy that uh, table? No. You cannot occupy that, right? Because someone has reserved it. Similarly, if you are going to a government office or mall you will see that it will mention as reserved parking, right? Can you park your car there? You cannot park, right? Because that has been reserved for someone. So that is why this create, this table, this is known as reserved keyword because SQL engine have a special meaning for this. They understand what to do, okay? This employee is known as user defined keyword. Okay, this is user has all the freedom. They can create a table with any name. Uh, there are a few exceptions I will teach you down the line. Any questions so far? Is it clear? So with this small piece of code, I am telling to SQL engine that SQL, I want to create a table with the name employee. Okay. What next? Next SQL will ask you that, okay, fine, then we'll, that is fine. We will create a table with the name employee for you. But tell me what, what are the column names you want, right? Because to create this table, I need some columns as well. So I will tell that I want ID, name, salary, location, department, okay? Then within this bracket, you have to write, I want ID, I want name, then I want location, and I want salary, and I want department, okay? Is this fine? Any question? So within this bracket, what I have to mention, what are this ID, name, location, salary department? 
what are these guys uh, these are the result products no no these are the column names yeah right so these are the column names here i taught you know that this id name salary location department these are the columns okay so when you want to create a table first of all you have to write create table the table name and then within bracket you have to mention the column names here i want to create a table employee with the column name id then name and location salary and department any questions so far anyone uh, what about their data type like id I, I, type i will come to that yeah i will come to that before that any question so far is it clear to everyone okay fine so so far i have just written this and i am telling to sql engine that sql i want to create a table with the name employee and these are the columns okay now the sql will ask you that okay fine then we we will create this employee table we will add this column as well that is well and good but then sql will ask you that what is the data type i will not discuss about data type right now we'll discuss down the line okay at a very high level i will tell you what is data type and one more thing guys one thing during my course okay suppose if i am teaching you create insert select in this all topics i'm covering now and you if you have a question related to distinct i will not answer it right now why many times we have faced this kind of scenario in batches okay they people they will ask question from distinct or some other topic from here if i will jump to this topic what will happen the sequence will break and those who are very new to the sequel they will get confused so that is why we will tell you that yes give us some time then we will answer the question related to that having or con to whatever you have uh, but many times it happens that i am teaching still create insert select and all this thing and you have an interview or you're working in a project and you're getting stuck in a sql query which is related to maybe like max in those cases either you stay on the call after the call is over you stay on the call you ask the question or you connect with me offline okay but during the course if i will jump from this topic to this topic the sequence will break okay and it become very difficult for me as well to explain and those who are new to the sql world they will get confused okay so now the sql engine will ask me that tell me the data type okay data type means you have to tell to sql engine that what kind of data you want to store here okay this is exactly same like when you are traveling in a rajdhani express right you all have observed that they will ask you that you will prefer veg or non veg right i think you all have observed this so similarly when you are creating a table so at that moment you have to mention you have to inform to the sql engine that what kind of data or what type of data you are going to store in this particular column okay so in this id column generally we will store numbers or integers right you all agree so if you want to store any uh, data which are numbers or integers then you have to write here int the moment you will write int int stands for integer the sql engine will understand that oh user wants to store integer in this id call is that fine any question okay now salary can i assign data type int to salary as well salary as well will store integers right okay now coming to name name is something like a string you have to store right name like rakesh ramesh shruti abdul ahmed something like that so whenever you want to store anything like this you have to write var char and within bracket write 50 ah you will be thinking that what is this var char then we why you have written 50 those all things we will answer down the line okay so just hold on so right now i am telling you one thing that whenever you want to store any data which is related to integer or numbers so what should be the data type guys 
INT. INT. Yeah, INT. Okay. I am not going in detail. I am repeating. I am not teaching you data type now. Data type is a different topic. We will, we will see down the line. In that, I will teach you what is INT, what is number, what is floor, what is care, what is where care, what is where care to, and all those things. But right now, I'm not going in that discussion. Okay, we will see after a few classes. Okay, so whenever you want to store integer or numbers, make it a habit. You have to keep the data type as INT. Whenever you want to store something as string like uh, alphabet, something like this, you should keep the uh, the data type as where STL. care where care fifty. Okay, any questions so far? Uh, what is my table name is INT. Will you take table INT? Table name INT. Okay, good, good. Give me two minutes only. I will come to that. Okay, just give me two minutes. I will come to that question. Okay. Uh, for location, tell me what should be the data type INT or where care 50? Where care. Where care 50. Where care 50. Very good. For location, it should be where care 50. For salary, I have kept data type as INT. Are you all convinced? Is this correct? Yes. Okay. What about department? Worker. 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 Fifty. Okay. So far, I think it is fine. Okay. This is the syntax to create a table. Uh, those not speaking, please one minute. Thank you. So this is the syntax to create a table. I will repeat this. What I have done here. First of all, I have written create table. So from this, your SQL engine will understand that the user wants to create something. Then the SQL engine will ask you, what is the table name which you want to create? I have mentioned here employee. This employee is known as user defined keyword. Okay, why? Because user has all the freedom to create a table with any name. Create and this table are known as reserved keyword because SQL engine have a special meaning for this. They know what they have to do, okay? It is something like you can assume coding word for them. Then within bracket, I have mentioned the columns which you are, which I want to add in this employee table. I want to add ID column, the name column, the location, salary department. Okay. If you have other uh, some other columns as well, you can add after giving comma. Okay, and there is no restriction on the number of columns. Tanvir, I have a question here. I just thought about something. So yeah, yeah. in the in the bracket. Uh, when mm -hmm. we were adding the column names, so mm -hmm. ID, uh, location, and name, uh, it's coming in that purple color. So is that some kind of reserved keyword like create and table? Because salary and departments, that is showing in like normal, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So on this platform, the color, please ignore it. Okay. But in your official laptop, if you have Oracle SQL developer, okay. So there you are correct. If the color will change to, I think, uh, indigo or uh, something like uh, bright blue color, they are the reserved keywords. Okay, you are correct. You can correlate it to that. Those are the reserved keywords. Okay. But here that doesn't hold the same meaning. Okay. okay. Have, I, have I answer? Okay. Yes, thank you. Fine. Uh, then what I was telling. Huh. So this is the syntax to create a table. Now, how to run this? To run this, you select it, and at the last put, you can see the uh, put semicolon. So you have to keep it at the last, then select it, and then click on this run button. You can see one run button is there. Click on the run button. Session has expired. Okay, this is the demerit of this. We will keep it idle for some time. The session will expire. Then just click credentials again. Okay, fine. So keep it idle for some time. It will be session will be over and you have to log in again. Click on run, run. What is the output? Table is created. Okay. Now, if you want to confirm whether the table is created or not, then what you have to do is you have a keyword DESC. Okay. DESC. DESC means describe employee. So now I'm telling SQL engine. That SQL, it is fine. You have created that table employee that is well and good. And you have shown the output as well, the table created. But show me the structure. I want to verify whether you have created correctly or not. So whenever you want to see the structure of the table, you have to use this keyword DESC. It stands for describe. 
and the table name which you have created that's all and then run it now please verify if this table is created correctly or not columns first of all concentrate on this so what all columns you have id name location salary and department check it id name location salary and department okay next is null please ignore this i will not teach you now what is null after two to three classes we will discuss about null ignore this part coming to third one type sql engine is telling that the id column you have mentioned as number type right but i am a bit confused i have mentioned here as int type but sql engine is telling that no you have created number type okay so don't get confused either int or number they both are one and the same don't get confused with this okay hope it is clear now the next is name for name i have mentioned where care 50 right but here it is showing where care 250 okay so this is only for oracle platform if you will mention where care oracle will take it as where care 250 okay so again don't get confused with all these things okay so it will take where care 250 location again it is where care 250 salary you have mentioned as int it is taking as number that is same department you have mentioned where cal 50 it is mentioned here as where 250 i repeat i am not discussing about data type now data type is a different topic we will discuss in that and all those things okay any question ah sorry then someone asked me that tanvir can if my table name is int and if you're using int here what will happen okay now let's try to understand now suppose I am creating a table with the name int, okay? And I have given some columns, suppose id and name. Id, I, I will keep data type as int and for name, I will keep it as varchar 50, okay? Now I am trying to run this. Table is created, fine. Is it clear? But I will tell you one best practice. Never use any reserved keyword for creating a table or never use any data type for creating a table. Okay. Now see, create table, create. Okay. Now I am running it. Now observe the output. Why it is telling invalid table name? Any idea? We use reserve keywords. Correct. So here I am trying to create a table with the name create, right? And what is the create here? Create is a reserved keyword. So SQL engine is telling you that boss, you are trying to create a table with the name create. But create is a reserved keyword. We will not give this to you. It is it is equivalent equivalent to the scenario where it is mentioned as a reserved parking, and you are trying to park your car there. Okay, so that is why our, that is what I mentioned you never create a table with the reserved keyword name. Okay, or with the data type. These things are not allowed. Uh, is it clear? Any question? But how come this int table oh, has it is, Yeah, it is taking here. Okay. But that is what I told you as a best practice. You should not take the reserved keyword name or the data type name to create a table. Apart from that, you can take any name, whatever you want. Okay. Uh, is that clear, guys? Yes. Any other question? Is this syntax clear how to create a table? Tell me yes or no. Is it clear? Uh, hmm. yeah. I have a question. So here yeah, yeah. in case of INT, it has been created a table, but in case of created create, it has given an error. Hmm. error. So in both of the cases, like, so INT is also a reserved keyword or not? It is not considering? No, 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 no. See, this INT, this where care, this are, again, these are the data types. Okay. For this as well, your SQL engine have a special meaning. 
So that is why I mentioned that please don't use this reserved keywords or this data type to create table because you will see a strange behavior. You see, in this case, it is throwing error message, right? Invalid table name. Okay. But here it is accepting it. But generally, that is what I mentioned as a best practice. You should never use the reserved keyword or the data type to create a table with that particular name. You take any other name, that is fine. Uh, is that clear? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? And similar, and the same thing is applicable for column name as well. Okay. Here, ID, name. Okay. This should not be a reserved keyword. That is not allowed. Okay. Any other question? You hmm. have one question. Key like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like how to know, like, uh, I don't know, like where, like we have to add like this rows and columns because uh -huh. like all are in this similar rows, right? Like when you add the column between INT and bar caror location, uh -huh. how to decide like it's the row side and it's the column side. Okay. See, uh, these things, ID, name, location, salary department, oh, these are the columns. That is what I, I mentioned here, that this is an employee table. And these headers, you can see, you know, these headers, these are the columns. I have not told anything about the rows now, that how to insert a row. We will see after this, that how to insert this data. That will be the next topic. Okay, but these all are the column names. So here, what I'm showing is, just I'm showing how to create a table. So the table which I have created is employee, and these are the column names only id name location salary department these are the column names or the headers i have not explained anything about rows now that how to insert row that i will explain you after this actually i just skipped that part so that's the reason oh. I guess. <laughs> okay yeah. okay okay no issue is that clear now yeah yeah thank you okay okay no problem any other question anyone these are the basics uh, they should be clear hi ah, yeah hi so, yeah, so is there a predefined list of reserve keywords available for SQL? Yeah, yeah, we have predefined list. I will share that with you. Okay, or you can see all these keywords which I have mentioned here. These all are the reserved keywords. Length, distinct, count, group by what all you can see, no? Okay. These all are the reserved keywords. Why the name is reserved? Because SQL engine have a special meaning for this. They know what to do. This is like a coding word. They know what to do. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Uh, fine then. Okay. So, so far I have shown you that how to create a table and this is the very basic syntax I have told. Don't think that the table creation is over. No, many other things are there. While creating a table, you have to add primary key, you have to add constraints and multi, uh, many other things that they will discuss all those things on the line. So this is the very simple syntax to create a table and to add the column. Okay. So that is fine. Table is created. And we have verified as well using this DSC command. This will show you that table structure. Now I'm very much sure that, okay, my table employee is created. Perfect. What next? Once we have created a table, what you will do after that? We will insert. We need to insert the data. Ah, you have to insert the data. It is exactly same as you have constructed a house. What next? You will shift there, right? Or you will uh, uh, hire some tenant. Correct. So same thing. Now the next task is to insert the data. Now to insert the data, we have to use this keyword insert. This insert is again a reserved keyword. Okay. Because the moment you will write insert, SQL engine will understand that, oh, user wants to insert something. Okay. Then I'm writing insert into employee values. From this, I'm telling to SQL engine that SQL, I want to insert some record into this employee table. In the entire SQL course, I will show you that each and every point everywhere, you have to mention about the table. Now, now here you can ask a question that then we right now you have created this employee table and SQL engine knows that, then why you are mentioning this table name again? Directly write insert into values. The SQL engine will understand no, that, okay, he wants to insert data in this employee table. Then why you are mentioning the table name? 
Any idea why I am mentioning the name here? That I want there to insert. There can be multiple table. tables. Hmm. In a database, you can have multiple tables, 100, 200, more than that. So that is why explicitly you have to mention the table name where you want to insert the data. Okay, fine. And this is the values uh, I'm going to insert within bracket. Now I will insert. Now ID was one, so I will write one, then give comma. Then name, I've given A, you can give anything. And let me keep it like Ahmed or anything, you can keep name. And then location, suppose it is Delhi. I will write Delhi here. Salary is 100 rupees, 200, whatever you want, you can add it. And suppose he is from technical department, I will write tech. Okay. Now I will run this query. Let me show this. One row inserted. So SQL engine is telling that, okay, fine. We have inserted this row in your employee table. And this is the data ID one, name is Ahmed, location is Delhi, salary is 100, department is tech. Okay. Now what next? I will verify whether the data is inserted correctly or not. So to check the data, you have a keyword which is known as select. Okay. Select is again a reserved keyword. When you will write select, your SQL engine will understand that user is asking for some data. Then I will write this star. A star means I am telling to SQL engine that SQL, I want all the data. Then SQL will ask you that, okay, fine, then we, we will give you all the data, but from which table, okay? Then I will write from employee table. You see, again, I'm explicitly mentioning the table name. So that is why while creating table, I have mentioned the table name. While inserting data, I mentioned the table name. While fetching data, I am mentioning the table name. Now, when I will execute this query, now verify the data. Now you can see ID one, name Ahmed, location Delhi, salary 100, department is tech. So this record is successfully inserted in your employee table. Okay, and this is the syntax to insert data. I know you'll be having a lot of questions. So I will pause here and over to you guys. Please ask questions if you have it. So what happens if you want to enter multiple uh, data? So do we have to like, uh insert again and again on their response. Correct. Good question. That Tanvir here, you have inserted only one record. But in my project, I have to insert 100 records. So do you think the same script I will write 100 times? So no. So hi, yes, you can write the same script 100 times. There are shortcut as well for that. But generally what happens in a project, you will be getting data in an Excel file or CSV file, right? Or dot that file or XML file, JSON file. From there, you have to extract and load in the database. That is a different way how we can do the bulk insert. That is a different thing, okay? But manually, when you want to insert one or two records or three record or 10 record, you have to do like this. Or suppose uh, if I want to insert data for some other information as well, suppose two, and this is, Anand location is Mumbai, salary is 200, then three. Suppose this is Suresh, location is same 400, and suppose he is from HR. Okay, suppose now I want to insert these two records. Okay, so you select both the records, keep colon at the end, and click on run then both this record will be inserted at the same time. You see one row inserted, one row inserted. Now, if you want to verify it, then again, run this query, select a star from the table. Let me show this to you. Now see all the record and inserted. Similarly, if you have 100 records, you create the 100 insert script and you can run it. All the records will be inserted at the same time. But when you're working on project, now what happened? You'll be getting data in Excel file and you have to extract it from there. And that is the task of data engineers. They will create a script either in Python or SQL to load the bulk data. Okay. Any other question, guys? Yeah, I have one question. As you hmm. said, key, like we will be getting data from an Excel. So hmm. we can use Excel for extracting the data, right? Like hmm. do some changes. 
So why are you using the SQL? Uh, no, 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 no. What I'm telling is that uh, generally what happens in the projects, okay, the data on which you have to do, suppose uh, I have a restaurant business, okay. I have to analyze my daily data, correct? That how my business is performing. And I have a restaurant at Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, this five location, okay? I have hired a person, data engineer, who will do all these things. He will load data. So to load the data, he needs the data, no? So he will connect with the manager of Delhi location, Chennai, Mumbai, and all these places that, okay, send me the data. Now tell me how they will send you the data of that particular day transaction. Maybe in the Excel sheet they will give, right? Or maybe in .csv file or .txt file or .dat file. So once he will send that data, the data engineer, what he will do, he will extract the data from the Excel file and then he will load into the database. And then again, tomorrow, same activity will happen. The manager at Delhi, they will send the transaction details of that particular day in an Excel file or .csv file. And the data engineer will extract data from there. He will load it into the database. So slowly on a daily basis, your database will keep on growing. So that is what I'm telling you. The source team, they will they used to send data in .csv file or many other formats are there. From there, you have to extract and load it into the database. Okay. Uh, have I answered? Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Same thing yesterday I have discussed in the ATL course. Those who are those, I think many participants were there, so you can correlate that to what I'm teaching now. Okay. Any question from this insert part? Hey, hi, Tanvir. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if I want to fetch only one column, so hmm. can I do that? Okay, good. So here, when I have written select to start from employee, I'm showing all the details, okay? But suppose uh, you want to see only the name, that Tanvir, I am not interested in the location salary department. Just show me the name of the employees who are working for my organization. So remove this star, just write the column name which you want. I want to see only the name, so I have written here name column, okay? And then execute it. Now you're getting only name column, right? Ah. Now you will think that, no, 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 Tanvir, I want name and location both. I want to see that the Anand belongs to which city, Suresh is from which city, or out of which location they are working. Then write name, give comma, and then write the next column name, location. And then again, execute it. Now see, it is giving name and location both. Okay. Now, suppose if you will tell that, no, I want department as well. Then what you will do? Comma yeah. department. Very good. Comma DEPT department. Okay. We got department as well. Fine. Is that clear? Yes, yes. Okay. Fine. Ah. Thank you. Ah, no problem. But here you have to be very careful that the name and spelling should be exactly same what you have mentioned here. Suppose I want to suppose your department. If I will write like this, do you think I will get the data? What do you think, guys? What will happen? It'll show an error, error. because department is ah. not. This will throw an error. Although the, the spelling is correct, this is the correct spelling of department. But SQL is not bothered about the English spelling of this. He will check this table. That in this table, what we have mentioned, you have written DEPT. So he will search for DEPT. And that is why it is telling that, sorry, I don't have any column with the name department. This is invalid. OK? So you have to be careful here. You have to write the exact same name what you have mentioned here. Is that clear? Yes, yes. Clear. Okay. So like in a table, if hmm. you have DEPT and, and the other second is department. So we can add, right? Ah, ah, good, good, good. That suppose if I have one more column, department in full, this is what you're telling? Yeah. yeah. Ah, then it is fine. If you have one more column department in full, that is fine. You can write here dep uh, department as well. It will fetch you. It will fetch this data. The only condition is whatever column name you are mentioning here, that name should be present here as well. That is the only condition. Suppose I am creating a table with the column name something randomly, something like this. Okay. 
SQL is not bother whether it makes sense or not. Same thing should be present here after comma. It will fetch the data for you. Hope it is clear. Uh, is it clear? Yes. Any it's clear. Okay. Okay, so it's almost 8.30. I will, I know it is Monday. You'll be having some official task as well. I will stop here. But many other things are there in this insert. We'll discuss it tomorrow. Okay, so that's all for today, guys. Okay, it was a demo session. I will uh, share the recording with you today. And a uh, few assignment questions as well. And we will connect tomorrow. And uh, uh, many of you have already, uh, what I can say that uh, you have listed, you registered for the course. Uh, you know that we have limited participants uh, policy because it becomes very difficult if you have more participants, then you have to evaluate the questions, the assignments and all those things. Okay. But you can connect with me after class if any other clarification is needed. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Okay. Then we'll, uh, how will you send the uh, videos? Uh, I will upload on the YouTube and then I will share the link with you. Okay. But for the regular participant who have registered for the course, we will give the private access from tomorrow onwards. Today's video will be public. Okay. Okay. I'm already reached out. Okay. Fine. Okay. Any other question, anyone?